What's up guys, welcome to the Combat Athlete Physio YouTube channel where we take human movement science and we bring it to the combat sports. Today we're going to be breaking down some of the anatomy and biomechanical principles behind the fight between Rod Tang and Takeru, particularly the last sequence to end the fight. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to let you do is see this all the way through full speed. Obviously it's really quick, so pay attention and then we'll go back and go through a slow motion. Okay, so we've got a little sequence here. The first thing we're going to do is start from the ground, and then we're going to talk about how he works all the way up through distributing force through his body. And then on this second punch, we're going to look at some of the principles behind what happens whenever somebody gets knocked out or knocked down like this when they lose consciousness for a brief moment. Okay, so let's start all the way at the ground. So whenever he plants this back leg and sends his center of mass forward to land this beautiful left hook, he... When he presses off, he's showing us an example of what a lot of athletes do, and we see this movement throughout athletics in general, called triple extension. And that's extension of the ankle, the knee, and the hip, respectively. Okay, so, so if we start with the ankle, ankle extension is actually called plantar flexion. I know that that's a weird scenario there, but plantar flexion is actually ankle extension. So he's extending the ankle, he's extending the knee, and he's extending the hip. So extending the knee would be straightening the knee, and then extending the hip would be bringing the thigh bone backwards or backwards behind you. So as he does this, the muscles involved in this at the ankle, the gastroc and the soleus. And then when we move up to the knee, the straightening of the knee or the extension of the knee is happening due to muscles called the quadriceps. Those muscles straighten the knee. And then we've got a combination of the hamstrings and the glute max that are helping extend the hip. Okay, so there are other muscles that do it, but those are the main ones. Now let's move up to the hips and the trunk. So let's pay attention to how the trunk is moving. So we'll, we'll consider the trunk, we'll talk about the shoulders and the hips. And one of the ways we're gonna look at the trunk movement is I want you to draw a line from hip to hip, or actually, you know what we can do? We can actually just draw it from ribbon to ribbon. That would give us a good visual here. So from ribbon to ribbon, and then from shoulder to shoulder, particularly in this clip here. Okay, so in this position, if we draw a line from shoulder to shoulder, ribbon to ribbon, we see that those planes, those lines would be relatively parallel with one another. Now, as he plants and he sends his center of mass forward, notice what his hips are doing. Pay attention to his hips first. His hips go from facing his opponent, Takeru, to the right, our right of Takeru, okay? So notice that hip switch. Now, watch what happens with the shoulders. So just pay attention to the shoulders now. Now, if we take in mind what we just saw with the hips and watch the shoulders with the hips, we can see that the hips turn a lot quicker right here. So you could barely see that riding anymore, but you could also see both of his shoulders kind of facing in the same direction. So his shoulders maintain facing Takeru, and his hips turn to the right. And what this does is this kind of creates a twisting motion at the trunk. And this twisting motion at the trunk does a couple of things. You can't really see the muscles very well from here, but the external oblique in the front of our muscle, we consider this like an anterior trunk muscle. And then some of the muscles in the shoulder girdle, the anterior delt, and the pec major, which are involved in throwing a left hook like this, which is essentially just bringing the arm around. We call that horizontal adduction. So he's got his hips switched and he's got his shoulders still facing Takeru. And what this does, you can even see some of the shoulders in the posterior shoulder girdle, like the uh, middle trap, the upper trap, some of the rhomboids and even the posterior delt that's helping with that wind up motion. Okay, so what happens is muscles like the external oblique, the pec major, and the anterior delt all put on stretch. They lengthen under tension. And once they lengthen under tension, that gives him the opportunity to shorten them with a concentric contraction with more force. Now, he is kind of in mid-air when he makes contact, which may not be super ideal, but remember, all that matters is what's effective. Okay, so his center of mass is moving forward, his hip switch, his shoulder lags behind, puts a big stretch on the external oblique and the pec major and the anterior delt on the other side of his shoulder, and then it lands. Okay, so this is just a good visual of the biomechanical principle called the stretch reflex. I actually have a video on that that breaks down the stretch reflex in much more detail scientifically, so go watch that if you want to learn a little bit more about that. And after he makes really good contact here, Takeru evades the right, and then we're gonna pause here again. So he's got this wide stance. And with this wide stance, kind of like Mike Tyson-esque, he used to keep a really wide stance and kind of walk forward uh, and throw really big hooks. It's kind of what he's doing here. So he's using that wide base to create a lot of torque around the spine and to finish with another left hook. Now, we've already talked about what happens during that left hook up here in the 
up here in the upper body. But let's talk about a little bit more about what happens here as he makes contact and some of the mechanisms that might play a role in this, what we call acute loss of consciousness. This loss of consciousness, pretty self-explanatory. It means that you are not conscious anymore. And acute means it happens pretty quickly. Okay, so right when you make contact, it's acute, and then you lose consciousness. What we think happens is this rapid acceleration and then subsequent deceleration especially a rotational force, seems to put a lot of traction on something called the neuron or our nerves. And a neuron very basically is made of a cell body, dendrites, and an axon. And part of the nerve or the neuron that carries the signals is axons. Okay, so when those axons are carrying signals, they have a cell membrane, and we think that this cell membrane becomes disrupted. Okay, and if enough of those cell membranes get disrupted, it causes a loss of consciousness. That brain tissue is very sensitive to mechanical tension. So we used to think that whenever you get hit in the button or on the side of the face, that that was what's caused it. But there's really no way mechanistically that, that those nerves that are on the chin would cause a loss of consciousness. They're not, they don't play a role in that. But this really big whipping effect, this whiplash effect, could cause enough mechanical tension in the nerves, according to the research that's been done so far anyway, to be able to explain the acute loss of consciousness and then the relatively quick regaining of consciousness. Okay, so Takaru comes back here. He's a little bit, he, he may have been just dazed, but it looked like he lost consciousness enough to at least fall down into the ropes anyway. Okay, so that really, really good view of the rapid acceleration into left cervical rotation and then whiplashing back out of left cervical rotation, uh, and it was just lights out for him. But, you know, obviously Rod Tag won this fight. Uh, let me know if you guys like this kind of breakdown. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.